So we're going to begin by defining the area that we're going to import our 3D model into. And this needs to be big enough to accommodate the model with some space around it to allow us to cut the part out. So to do that, let's go over and create a new file. Here we're going to work with a single sided job. Job size, we're going to specify a width of 10 inches here, a height of 10 inches and the material thickness that we're working with is 3 quarters of an inch. Making sure that my unit is set to inches there. Let me set as the zero position. So we're going to define this to be on top of our material surface. Let me choose our XY datum position and to set that to the lower left hand corner. And then we have the option to alter our model in resolution. So if we use that drop down menu, you'll see that we have three settings. We have standard, high, and we also have very high. Now the higher the setting means the better quality of a model you're going to get, but it would mean that I would have to face slower calculation times when it comes to creating toolpaths. In this case, we're just going to go with the standard resolution there. We can select the appearance here, so we will go with Canadian Maple, and then we could just go ahead and press OK. So to import a component, we come over to the Modeling tab, and we come up to this icon under the 3D Model Tools, where we're able to import a component or a 3D model. And if I click on that, that will open up an area where I can browse through my PC to find any particular models that I'm able to import. In this case, we're going to look at importing the Magnolia flower, and that's in a V3M file format. So I'm going to go ahead and press open. And we can see the grayscale of that 3D model here in the 2D view. In some cases, it may be easier for you to see both the 2D and the 3D view here when working with imported models. So let's look at tiling our windows. So we're going to come over to this icon here, and that will enable us to tile our windows vertically. That way we can see both the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right hand side. In this example, we're going to walk you through the process of importing a 3D model into the software. We're going to look at how to orient, position and scale the z-height of the part and then we'll show you how to create the 3D roughing, 3D finishing toolpaths and then we'll look at how to do the final profile toolpath to cut the model out of the material block to get the part that you can see here. So let's just go to File, Close and if you look in both the 2D and the 3D view, you'll see that we're only able to see the actual 3D model that's within our work area. So this white space represents the work area and that's why we're only able to see the top right hand corner of that flower here in the 3D view. I can move my 3D view around if I wanted to and zoom out to take a look at it in various locations and if I wanted to I could just put that in the isometric view. So to bring this flower into the centre of my job we need to look at our alignment tools. So with that selected let's come over to the drawing tab and then we're going to come over to transform objects and we're going to look at aligning selected objects. Click in there and that will open up the alignment tools. Here we want to align this to the centre of our workspace both vertically and horizontally. So we're going to use this option here. So let's close out of the alignment tools form. And now we're going to look at transforming the size of the flower that we've got here. So with that selected, we're going to select it again to put it into transform mode. And here I could just pull on any one of these handles to transform the size. Not only can I do this in the 2D view, but I have access to these handles here in the 3D view. And so again, I could just look at transforming the size of that flower by pulling on the handle there in the 3D view. And no matter what view I'm transforming the model, I'm able to see the result of the transformations in both the 2D and the 3D view there. I also have access to these hard blue nodes that you can see around the outside 
of our model here and these handles enable me to actually rotate the parts around. Again, I could rotate this in the 2D view, I could rotate this in the 3D view and I'm seeing the result of both of those in both different views there. And so I'm able to dynamically manipulate this imported model just like I can with a vector. The only difference here is that I have the option to alter this in the 3D view also. Now I could be very precise about the manipulation also. So let's just go ahead and undo all of the steps there until we're back into the center of our job. Okay, so back to how we had our part when we originally imported it and aligned it to the center there. And so with that flower selected, we can come over to transform objects and we can look at setting the selected object size. So if I click on this icon here, that will open up the set size form where I'm able to make this bigger or smaller according to whatever it is that I wanted to do. In this case, we need to specify an anchor point, so that's going to be in the center. So we're going to scale this from the center point of our flower here. Then we could alter the width and the height. With link XY checked, it means that we can just change one of these values and it will scale the other value in proportion to the value that we changed. For example, if we change the width of this so it's now 11 inches, you'll see here it's updated the height and scaled it in proportion. Auto Scale Z does a similar thing, so whatever we change the size to of our part, it's automatically going to scale up the Z height of our part in proportion to the actual size that we're changing it to. So let's go ahead and press Apply there. And so we can see here that it's bigger than our actual job size. So we're just going to change this. So we'll change the width and we'll make that 9 instead. Again, with link XY checked, you can see it's automatically updated the height there. And we could go ahead and press apply, happy with the size that we've got there. So then we can close out of the set size form. And with our object still selected, let's come over and look at rotating that. So here we can rotate our part by precise values. So we're going to make our rotation center in the center of our flower. And here I could specify an angle that I'd like to rotate that by. For example, let's make that 5 degrees. Go ahead, apply that, and you'll see it's rotated that about the center point by 5 degrees. So then we can close that down. Another way that I can transform the flower is by mirroring it. So with that selected, we'll come over to Transform Objects and use the option here to mirror selected objects. Here we have various options in the mirror form to mirror the parts that we've got in our job. So here what I would like to do is I'd like to take our flower and just flip it about the job center horizontally. So we'll use this option here to flip about job center and then use the option to flip horizontal and when I click on that you'll see it's just flipped that over horizontally there. So I like what we've got there so then we can go ahead and close out of the form. So now that our 2D orientation is correct, the last thing we need to check before we can start calculating any toolpaths is the actual height of the object in 3D, or what we refer to as the Z height. So to do that, we come over to the Modeling tab, and with our components selected, we come over to this wrench icon here, and when we click on that, that will open up the Component Properties form. And so here I can change the name of our component if I wanted to. I can alter the combine mode if we had other components in our job to change how it's interacting with those other components. We're just going to leave those as they are for the time being. Shape height, we can see it's currently at 0.4975. So we're going to increase this. I could use the slider if I wanted to increase it or I could even type in precise value here. We'll make that 0.55, press spacebar to enter that in, and that will update that there in the 3D view. I'm not going to alter any of the other settings here. We're just going to look at closing out of the properties form. And now we're ready to switch over to the toolpaths tab. 
To do that, we're going to use this icon here to switch to the toolpaths commands. That'll just undraw our design tab on the left hand side and that's going to open up the toolpaths tab on the right hand side. And so here I have access to all of the options to set my material and to create and edit various toolpaths. So the first and most important thing we need to do here is our material setup and this is where we relate our virtual setup to that of the physical setup of the material and how we're going to set up the machine. So material thickness I'm working with is three quarters of an inch here. I'm going to set the XY position to the lower left so X is at zero, Y is at zero in the lower left hand corner. Z0, we're going to set that off the material surface, so off the top of the block there. Let me move on to the model position in the material. Now it's important that we set this as we're working with a 3D model. We need to actually position that model within our material block. Now it's a good idea here to apply a small gap above the model so if there was any discrepancies in the material flatness or how you set the Z0 you'll make sure that you avoid any flat spots. So to do this we could use the slider so this lighter colour represents our model and you'll see that I can move that within the material block or I could just accurately input a specific value if I needed to. So here we're just going to go with the value above our model of 0 0.05 in there. So we've got a gap above of 0 0.05 then we've got our model thickness which is at 0.55 and then below our model we've got flat stock that's going to be 0.15. Then we go over, check over the rapid Z gaps above the material, ensuring that they're safe and avoiding any clamps that we may have in our job. Check over the home and start position, again ensuring that everything's safe here and then we could go ahead and press OK. So now we're ready to calculate 3D toolpaths. It's important to understand what these 3D toolpaths will actually machine. Now at the moment the flower is currently selected. If I click in the white space that will deselect that flower. And it's important to note here that it isn't relevant to what I'm going to cut having this flower selected. The only thing that is relevant here is if the 3D object is visible in the 3D view. Now what we see here in the 3D view is the result of the components that we have visible in the component tree, the order that they are in and the combined modes of the components and of the levels and the result of that is what we refer to as the composite model and this is what we see in the 3D view. Now in this example we only have a single component and it's visible and we can see that here in the 3D view and that's what we're going to cut. So what we've selected is completely irrelevant here and the software will just calculate toolpaths based on what is visible here in the 3D view. So we're going to look at two different 3D toolpaths. The first is going to be our roughen toolpath where we use a large tool to hog out the majority of the material. And then we run a finishing toolpath which enables us to use a smaller tool that's going to go over the area we've already cut away using that roughen toolpath to cut out all of the detailed areas using that smaller tool. So the first toolpath we're going to look at is the 3D roughen toolpath. So to access the 3D roughen toolpath we use this icon here. When I click on that, that's going to open up the rough machining toolpath form. So the first thing we need to do is choose a tool. I can see we currently have a quarter inch end mill selected there. This is the tool I'd like to use for our 3D roughen toolpath. So if I use the edit option here, we can edit the settings for that tool for this particular toolpath alone. So let's use the edit option here. I can see we currently have a pass depth of an eighth of an inch. I'm just going to increase that to 0.2 and this is going to dictate the number of levels of cut that we're going to get with this particular toolpath. So then I can go ahead and press OK. Let me move on to the machining limit boundary. In this case we're going to use the model itself as the boundary to govern the actual 3D toolpath. 
Then we have an option to apply a boundary offset. Okay, so you want to make this large enough to allow for the tool to come down the side of the part. Now by default the software is only going to take the center of the tool to the actual edge of the model boundary and we want to go past that edge of the model by at least the radius of the tool plus the machining allowance to make sure that the tool will fit down the side of the part. So we're going to put in quite a large offset here of 0.25 okay so this is actually the same size as the tool that we plan to use here. Let me move on to the machining allowance. So this is a virtual skin that we can add to the model to keep the roughing tool slightly away from the finished surface to avoid the larger tool chipping at the finished part. So here we'll just put in a small value of 0 0.03 in there. Then we choose the actual strategy. Okay, so we've got two options here, we have C-Level and we have 3D Raster. Now Z-Level will cut the part in 2D slices and leave a stepped finish. And then the 3D Raster, which is more like a semi-finish, will go back and forth over the part with the roughing tool. In this case we're going to do a Z-Level strategy here where we're going to raster along the X-axis. We can then profile that first, last or none. In this case we're going to do that last. And so after it's cut a level it will run a profile pass to clean up the edge of the level where there is a 3D object before it goes down into the next level. Okay, if we wanted to we could apply ramp plunge moves and in this case we're not going to do that, we're just going to go ahead and give our toolpath a name. So I can name this to anything I want here. So we're just going to call this 3D roughing and then I'm just going to put the tool in here for good measure just so that I remember that. So 0 0.25 and then EM for end mill and then I could go ahead and use the calculate option. And so this will automatically open up the preview toolpath form. We can see in the 3D view, I can actually see that toolpath represented by the blue line there. And then if I go ahead and preview that toolpath, you can see that that tool is being animated there. If I wanted to, I could change the appearance, so I could come over to where it says Steel Bright, and you'll see I'm presented with a drop-down list, and I've got various materials that I could use to preview that toolpath in. So we're going to go with the Canadian Maple in here, and you'll see how that part looks. If we maximise the 3D view here, we can take a look and we can see all of the various steps that we've got there in that toolpath. Now the toolpath preview shows you a very accurate representation of what we'd see on our CMC machine if we were to save out that toolpath and cut it out. Now here we can see that our toolpath has actually gone out of the edge of our material here. Now if this was a problem we could look at rectifying that. So let's go into the 2D view and to take our model, I'm going to press F9 on the keyboard to centre that. I'm going to close out of the preview toolpath. We're just going to double click to go back into the 3D roughen toolpath and we're going to calculate that. Okay, so it's just going to recalculate that for us and then we could just reset that preview. I'm just going to undraw the tool and undraw the animate preview this time. I'm just going to preview that toolpath without the animations and we can see the finished result there. And you can see now it's not cutting into the edge of our part. And so you can see how powerful this preview really is. Okay, so once we're happy with the 3D roughing there, we can then move on and think about finishing the part with a finer tool to create the finish pass. So let's close out of there. I'm going to go into the 3D finishing toolpath. So the first thing we need to do is select a tool from the tool database. You can see we've currently got a quarter inch ball nose in there. It's a little bit too big for the detail that I want to get in at here. I'd like to look at using an eighth inch ball nose. So we're going to use a select option here. Go to the ball nose section. We're going to use that eighth inch ball nose. Check over the settings. Happy with those. Could go ahead and press OK. Again, the machining limit boundary, we're going to go with the model boundary this time. 
Again, we want to apply a small offset, so again, a little bit larger than the radius of the tool. So we'll just put in a value of 0.1 in there so that that ball nose can come down and cut down the edge of that flower. Let me choose our machine strategy. In this case, we're going to raster cut this. It's going to go back and forth and make sure that the angle is at zero degrees so it's parallel to the x axis. And we could go ahead and give that a name. So we're going to call this 3D Finish. And again, I'm just going to put the tool in there for my own reference. So, eighth inch ball nose. Go ahead and press calculate. And so because we're using a much smaller tool with a much smaller step over, you can see the actual tool path here is a lot closer to each other. Let's just put that in the ISO view. And then again, we could go ahead and actually preview that. So using the preview option, we'll actually simulate what the part will look like if we was to cut that out on the CNC. So here is where you want to check that you've got sufficient detail picked up from this tool. Okay, and I'm fairly happy with the detail that we've got there. I like the way that it looks. And so now I could go ahead and save out these toolpaths, but I just want to run one more final toolpath here, and that's a profile toolpath to actually cut this part out of my block of material. So I'm going to look at using a 2D toolpath here to cut that out. So let's just close that down and just put that in the ISO view. Now in order to profile this out, I need a vector that represents the boundary of the flower that we've got here so that the software knows where it needs to cut that profile. So let's just temporarily switch over to the design side of things and then we're going to go into the 2D view here. Now with this component selected, now that we're in the modeling tab, we're going to look at fitting a vector around the bounds of this object. So with that component selected, we're going to come over and create a vector boundary around the selected components. And when I click on that, and if I just click in the white space here to deselect that component, you'll see that a vector has been fitted around the boundary of the flower model that we had selected earlier. So this is the vector that we're going to use to create our profile toolpath. So now that we've got that vector, let's switch back over to the toolpaths tab. Just use this icon here to zoom to fit there, and then we'll just look at tiling our windows vertically so you can see the 2D and the 3D view there. So with that vector selected, let's come over to the profile toolpath. So the first thing we need to do is specify our cut depth. So we're starting at zero on top of our material block. We're going to cut all the way through. So we're going to put in 0.75 in there. That's what we set our material thickness to. Then we're going to go ahead and choose our tool. In this case, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. If I use the edit options, I can just check over some of the settings here. So we've got a pass depth here of a quarter of an inch. And so that's going to cut the entire part out in three passes. Let me specify how we machine the vectors, whether we machine outside, inside, or actually on those vectors. In this case, we want to go outside of those. We have various advanced options in here. Um, we're just going to go to the bottom here and give that a name. Again, we'll just call that profile and then the tool in there just for my own reference. So 0.25 EM for end mill. And then we could go ahead and press calculate. So here we're presented with the tool path here in the 3D view. Let's maximize that 3D view and we'll go ahead and actually preview that. Let's just twiddle the view there and we can see how the part has actually cut that out of our material block. If I wanted to, I could double click on the waste material just to get a more accurate representation of the actual single part that I'm cutting out. 
Now it's very important that your part looks correct at this stage as the toolpath preview shows you a very accurate representation of what we would see on our CNC machine if we was to go ahead and run these toolpaths. So if something doesn't look as you want to do it here at this stage, you can go back, make edits to the toolpath, recalculate them until you're satisfied with the results that you can see here in the toolpath preview. And that's what makes the toolpath preview such a powerful tool. If I wanted to, I could save a preview image of this that I could go ahead and send over to my customer for approval. Once I have their approval, I could go ahead and save out the toolpaths. So let's just close out of the preview toolpaths and select the 3D roughing using the quarter inch end mill. We're going to use this option here to save the toolpath. So I'm just going to uncheck this option to output all visible toolpaths to one file. And you'll see under toolpaths to be saved, I have the toolpath that I've got selected here listed in the saved options. So once we can see that tool and we're happy to save that out, we need to choose an appropriate post processor from the drop down list. So this post processor will format the data for that particular machine. So you need to choose one that is suitable for your machine. In this case, I'm just going to go with the G code and then I could go ahead and save that toolpath out, give that a name, or just keep the name as it is here, and then I could just simply press save. Do the same for the finish, I can see that's now listed, I could save that, and then again do the same for the profile. So let's just close that down, and so that really concludes this tutorial. So let's go ahead and save the file so that we can have access to it where we could make edits to the parts at a later date. So to do that we go to File, Save As and in the Project folder, I'm just going to call this one Importing Flower Model, Getting Started, press Save and you can access that from the Project folder.